We're dismissed. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Amen. We have been <clears throat> we've been studying in uh, Luke chapter two. And then all the studied in Luke four sixteen. And as you are turning there, <clears throat> I will give you a disclaimer. Will it even de punt zal ik niet zetten en uh, zeggen wat ik niet pretendeer. Perfect. I am a visitor here. Ik ben hier een bezoeker. And if I share anything that's wrong, en als ik iets verkeerd met u deel, or that may sound offensive, of als u zich uh, beledigt of uh, in de borst gestoken voelt. It is not the fault of this church. And is it not the fault of these elders? It is not the fault of these elders. It is not the fault of the elders. It is my fault. It is my fault. And I will be gone soon. And I will be gone soon. So please don't blame them. Dus geef geen schuld. It is a wonderful church. It is a wonderful church. And wonderful people. And wonderful people. However, if I share something good, my audience is good. I think that's a deal. Well, the Lord gets the glory. The great deal, the Lord. All right, Luke chapter two, verse sixteen, and we're going to read verses forty-one through fifty-one. From here to here, that's in it. And you can start. And the elders raised an elk year in Jerusalem on the Passover feast. En toen hij twaalf jaar was geworden en zij, zoals dit bij het feest gebruikelijk was, optrokken en de feestdagen volledig hadden, bleef het Jezus bij de terugreis terug in Jeruzalem achter. En zijn ouders bemerkten het niet. Daar ze vermoeden dat hij bij het reisgezelschap was, gingen zij één dag reis ver en zochten hem onder de verwanten en bekenden. En toen zij hem niet vonden, gingen ze terug naar Jeruzalem. En zoeken het. En het geschiedde na drie dagen dat zij hem vonden in de tempel waar hij zat in, te midden de leraren, terwijl hij naar hen hoorde en hun vragen stelde. Alle nu die hem hoorden waren verbaasd over zijn verstand en zijn antwoorden. En toen ze hem zagen, stonden ze besteld. En zijn moeder zeiden tot hem: Kind, waarom hebt gij ons zijn aangedaan? Zie uw vader en ik zoeken u met smart. En hij zei tot hen, waarom heb je naar mij gezocht? Wist gij niet dat ik bezig moest zijn met de dingen mijn vaders? En zij begrepen het woord niet dat hij tot hen sprak. En hij ging met hen terug en kwam te nazaren en was nog maar daar. En zijn moeder bewaarde al deze woorden in haar hart. So we have the story of Joseph and Mary. There's a little bit of the half of Joseph and Mary. They're going up to Passover. It's a time for the Passover and Easter. And Israel was required by God to attend Passover once a year. And it's for Israel who is supposed to have to go to Passover in Mariah every year. And it was a, a wonderful time. It was a perfect day, son. A time with the Lord. A day with the Lord. A time to spend with brothers and sisters. A day with my brothers and sisters. And they brought Jesus with them. And Jesus had us a meal brought. And this was Jesus' first Passover. It was the first day that Jesus had Passover. But while they're at the the feast, but the rest of the day, the feast, enjoying the celebration, and the need of the feast here. They lose sight of Jesus. They lose sight of Jesus at all. They don't even realize that he's not there. It's a perception that they see that he needs bands. So they're enjoying the celebration. The singing of the feast. They're enjoying the songs. The singing. They're enjoying the fellowship. The need of the meetup. Something. And finally, the feast is over with. And as the feast begins, and they start toward home. The trek is in the house. And they've been walking for a day. And they're now on the way home. And suddenly, somebody notices that there's something wrong. And then they see the man who is up there, but there's something wrong. There's something wrong. They're singing. 
Sie singen. They have their Bibles. But something's missing. It's Jesus. Jesus Jesus is missing. Jesus They have the feast. So the feast. The celebration of the Lord. So the But Jesus is not there. They have the fellowship of the brethren. But the Lord is not there. And we've we've been talking about that the last uh, two times that we've shared. That this can be the case for us also. We can love God. We can be involved in ministry. We can sing heartily when it comes time to sing. But we can get our eyes off of Jesus. In this case, they didn't get their eyes on bad things. They weren't looking at the things of the world. They were looking at godly things. And yet they still got their eyes off of Jesus. Now we know it's important to, to serve God. I'm an elder. And a pastor. And, and, and I understand that it's important that we minister of the things of God. And I know it is important that we over the things of God. But there's something more important than the ministry. And that's Jesus. And that's Jesus. We need to keep our eyes on Jesus. And so we've, we've talked at length about that. You, you missed it. He got it. <laughs> so now we're getting close to the end of, of our sharing. This and I'd like to for us to look at verse 43 again. So look at that. Verse 43. Verse 43. And then they, as this by the feast was used, was opgetrokken, and the feestdagen vollendigd hadden, bleef the kind Jesus by the terugreis to Jerusalem after and his ouders remember it not. Notice the exact word in here. That is the top. The word in here is not. It says, Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem. It says that Jesus after brief in Jerusalem. Now two things happened here. The very beginning. One was the parents. The one had of the ouders. Mary and Joseph. Mary and Joseph. They got their eyes off of Jesus. And it is their fault that they lost Jesus. Because they didn't always keep their eyes on him. And of course, we're, again, we're not just talking about the story, we're talking about a spiritual reality in our, our own lives. And then we not over this specific revolt that we have to make a we must keep our eyes on Jesus. But they didn't do that. And because of that, they started looking around. And now the bones are old. And they could no longer find him. But something else happened. Jesus did something. And then he had to go Jesus. Jesus intentionally stayed behind. Jesus blijft opzettelijk achter. There was something in his heart. There was iets in zijn hart. There was some reason why he stayed behind. There was in zijn hart een reden waarom hij achterbleef. He wasn't just a foolish little boy. Hij was geen dwaas klein jongetje. He's still the son of God. Hij was toen ook al de zoon van God. There was a reason, verse 43 shows us that, that he stayed behind, but there is a reason he stayed behind. 
Jesus So let's look at verse 46. Uh, Matthew 46, verse 46. And then it's geschieden after three days that they found in the temple where they sat in the de of the Lord, and they asked them questions. So when they left Jerusalem and then realized Jesus wasn't there, they saw the Jerusalem from Latin and they said in one that Jesus did not was there, they turned back. Toen keren ze terug naar Jeruzalem. To Jerusalem. To the Passover. Ze keren terug naar de Passover. Looking for Jesus. Op zoek naar Jezus. And the scripture we just read says that they looked for him for three days. En we lezen dus dat ze drie dagen lang gezocht hebben. And they're worried. En ze waren echt bezorgd. And they desired Jesus. En ze verlangden naar Jezus. The living Jesus. The living Jesus. The living Jesus. And so they're looking everywhere. En dus zoeken ze overal. And you can imagine as a parent what you would be thinking. Where would he be? You know, maybe they would went to the playground. If, if they had them back. <laughs> or, or some place like that where children might be. Or maybe he was there other children. Because they were looking for three days. Three days long, they said so. Seventy-two hours. Seventy-two hours long. That may not seem long. It's been like that for so long. But when you're a mama, as you are a mama, and your child is gone, and you look at this way, one hour is a long time. Two hours is a long time. Two hours is a long time. One day, one day. Two days. Oh my! So they are, they are um, just desperate to find Jesus. And brothers and sisters, this should be our heart hungering after Jesus. To know him, to be near him, to to uh, not just hear about him in a sermon. We hunger in us, we have a need to know him. We pay him, we pay him, we say. We need only to come and hear him in the dienst. But to be as close to Jesus as we can get. We will as dicht bij hem zijn, zo dicht mogelijk. So this verse says that they finally found him. Dus in dit vers lezen we dan dat ze hem eindelijk vinden. Um, now, we assume that our only desire should be to seek Jesus. We we gaan ervan uit dat ons enige verlangen zou moeten zijn om Jesus te zoeken. We preach something like this. Soms wordt er zo gepreekt. And the Holy Spirit touches our heart. En dan wordt er aangeraakt door de Heilige Geest. And we say, I need to seek Jesus. En dan zeggen we ook, ja, ik moet Jesus zoeken. But there's something else needed. Maar er is nog iets anders dat nodig is. Not just to seek Jesus. Niet alleen maar zoeken naar Jezus. But that and something else. Maar dat plus nog iets anders. Why did it take so long? Why did Jesus? Why did it take so long for Jesus to come along? It took so long because they did not know the place. It took so long because they did not know the place. He was in a certain place. Oh, but it's a specific place. And if you don't know the place, if you don't know the place, then you just keep seeking until you stumble across the place. Then you must be looking to go up and down. There was a place Jesus desired to be found. There was a specific place where he was wanted to be found. He intentionally stayed back. He believed on Sabbath after. He intentionally went to the temple. He came on Sabbath to the temple. That's important. That is very important. He didn't just wander around Jerusalem looking around. He sees so much that he just had a little fun with it. You know, a twelve-year-old boy. You would have come down. Oh, look at the banners up there. Okay, it's not even close enough. Oh, look at those funny people. Okay, it's not even close enough to get in. No, not Jesus. Nick, 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 Jesus. He goes straight to where he he intended to go. He got the correct number of people saying. You remember his words when his parents found him. You remember what he said to his mother and father. 
What are you doing here? What do you need? That's what they said to him. The same as in the He said, what do you need? I must be about my father's business. He went to the temple on purpose. He do bewust. Now, maybe keep your place here, but we're going to try to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 2. We're going to even make Ephesians. Ephesians 4, 6, 8. Ephesians chapter 2, and we will look at verse 20 through 22. Ephesians also 3, from the study of the book, and then we'll take it. Zo zijt gij dan in vreemdelingen en bijwoners, meer naar medeburgers der heiligen en uitgenoten gods gebouwd op het fundament van de apostelen en profeten, terwijl Christus Jezus zelf broeksteen is. In hen was elk bouwer goed ineensluiten op tot de tempel. Heilig in de Heer, in wie ook gij medegebouwd wordt tot de woonsteen der gods. This this is not speaking of some story in history here. Dit gaat niet over iets wat ooit is gebeurd is. These verses are speaking to the church. Want dit gaat over de kerk. They are describing us as the temple of God. Deze verses beschrijven ons als de tempel van God. The habitation of God. De plaats waar we woont. But that's what we're supposed to be. Want dat horen wij te zijn. De plaats waar we woont. Now, I, I use this next example a lot. Het voorbeeld dat ik nu ga geven, dat ik vaak. But I think it helps to explain the truth. Maar ik denk echt dat het helpt om de waarheid te begrijpen. If uh, in Jesus' time there was a Jew that was new to Jerusalem. De tijd van Jezus. Als een jood voor de eerste keer in Jeruzalem kwam. En hij walked into the city. En als hij dan de stadspoort binnenloopt. Hij walked up to a Jew that lived in Jerusalem. En een jood van Jeruzalem aanspreekt. En hij zei: Waar kan ik vinden God? Dan zegt hij: Waar kan ik God vinden? I've come to Jerusalem. Ik ben in Jeruzalem gekomen. I want to find God. Ik wil God vinden. And the Jew would immediately know the answer. And then the Jews from Jerusalem would immediately know the answer. The answer would be, you can find him in the temple. Dat moet wel zijn in de tempel. Je vindt God in de tempel. Amen. Amen. He's in the temple. He is in the temple. So that Jew would say, I want to, I want to see God. I want to meet with God. Dus die bezoeker die jongen zal dan zeggen, ik wil God ontmoeten, ik wil hem zien. How do I get there? Hoe ga ik daar? And he'd say, Well, you go two blocks this way. Dan zegt die jongen van Jeruzalem, ga maar twee blokken die kant uit. Take a right. Dan de straat naar rechts. And it'll be right there. En dan ben je er. And so he would. Follow the directions. Dan volgt die bezoeker die aanwijzingen. He would go up to the doors of the temple. Gaat hij naar de deur van de tempel. And in that temple, God would be there. And in the temple, he would be on foot. That temple to the Jews was a religious edifice. Was that? For the Jews, it was a temple and a religious building. The temple. He didn't get the temple. A religious edifice, a religious temple. But to God, the temple was home. For God, was the temple thuis. Saint God lived in the temple. God lived there in the temple. You remember? You read it up well. Well, then let's rehearse. Now we're not even here. When Israel came out of Egypt, when Israel left Egypt, what? God, well, let's, let me start off. I'll be hoping for you. 
Before they came out of Egypt, before they had to hit the ground, where was God? Waar was God toen? For the for the Jews. For the Jews. Waar was God toen? Where was He? He was up there. In the hymn of God. Way up there. Way up there. Okay. So then they crossed the Red Sea. Toen trokken ze door de Rode Zee. They made their way through the wilderness. Ze vonden een weg in de woestijn. And they get to a certain place. Oh, no. Oh, no. And God initiates something. And God begins to teach. God says, I want to be with you. He will be you, he says. He, he doesn't say, come up here. He says, I'm coming down there. 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 But he's not just going to walk among the people. Maar hij gaat niet zomaar rondzwerven rond de bende mensen. Hij zegt, build me a tabernacle. Zegt, bouw voor mij een tent. Build me a temple. Bouw voor mij een tempel. And I will dwell with you. En dan ga ik daar bij jullie en onder jullie wonen. What do we see from that? Wat kunnen we daar uit leren? There was from the very earliest times. Van in de allervroegste tijden al, there was something in the heart of God. Broeder, er is in het hart van God something He desired. Iets wat Hij zelf wou. He desired to be with us. Hij verlangde ernaar om bij ons te zijn. Not just to save us. Niet alleen maar ons te redden, but to be with us. Om echt bij ons te zijn. And there's something else He desired. En er is nog iets wat God wil. The way that he wanted to be with us. The manier waarop hij bij ons wilde zijn is ook zeer specifiek. You remember he came down in a big cloud. You read it in the Bible that God neerkwam in een grote wolk. Do you remember that? And his presence dwelt in that cloud. En God was aanwezig in die wolk. But where did that cloud dwell? Maar waar woonde die wolk? Over the tabernacle. Boven de tabernakel. And that cloud didn't follow follow individuals around. And he walked forth the king apart the individual soul. It always stayed in the tabernacle. Leave out the bowl in the tabernacle. So that if someone went to the market, this was it on him on the market. They didn't have a big cloud on them. And what's the king walk over it? You know, everybody was hey look. Was hij ook te zien over iemand die naar de markt ging? No, the important thing was the temple. Hij bleef over de tempel, de belangrijke plaats. So here we, now we catch back up. En nu kunnen we verder gaan met de rest van vandaag. Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is de Zoon van God. And where does he go first? En waar gaat hij eerst naartoe? Goes to the temple. Naar de tempel natuurlijk. Okay. Now remember what we read in Ephesians. Dus denk eraan wat we gelezen hebben in Ephesians. It says that we are. Verse 21 says that we are a building of God, and we're being built together as a holy temple in the Lord. In vers 1 staat er dat we in Hem als een bouwwerk wassen of groeien. Goed aan één sluiten op de tempel. Oké, en in vers 21 says that we're built together for one purpose. Ja, het is dat dat we goed in één sluiten zijn, dus met één doel. To be a habitation of God. Om een woonplaats te zijn voor de Heer. In the Old Testament, it was a shadow. It was just a picture of what was really in God's heart. Geen reden in het oude testament met de tabernakel en de tempel is maar een voorafschaduwing van wat er in de kolschap leeft. He didn't really just want to dwell in a building. God wilde niet echt in een stenen gebouw wonen. He wanted to live in us. He wilde in ons wonen. Colossians 1:27 says this. In Colossians 1:27 staat het volgende: Christ in you. The hope of glory. Christus in u. The hope of glory. Not just Christ in heaven. Niet alleen maar Christus in de hemel. Not just Christ in the church service. Niet alleen maar Christus in de kerkdienst. 
But Jesus could live through us. Jesus wil in en door ons leven. His life in us. Zijn leven moet in ons zijn. And we would live not just as Christians, but as the temple of God. Wij worden niet slechts als christenen te leven, maar als de woonplaats van God. You say, what's the difference? Wat is het verschil voor jou? There's a big difference between just being a Christian and being the temple of God. Is a zeer groot verschil tussen Christen zijn zonder meer en de woonplaats van God zijn. The first difference is the skill is it is that being a Christian means you're an individual. Being a Christian means you're living as an individual. Means okay. Yeah, yeah. Christen zijn betekent dat hij leeft als een individu. But living as a temple means that you're living that you're you're together. Als je leeft als tempel als woonplaats van God, dat betekent dat je samen met anderen de woonplaats van God bent. One body. Er is één lichaam. Jesus is body. Het lichaam van Jezus. One temple. Eén tempel. Jesus is temple. Jezus tempel. Or can we say it again like this? Of we kunnen het nog anders zeggen. Jesus is house. Het huis van Jezus. We horen het huis van Jezus te zijn. We are the house of God. Wij zijn het huis van God. Amen. Amen. Jesus is here. Amen. Jezus is bij ons. Geloof ik dat? But he's here in the church. Is he in the church? You're the church. You're the church. You're the temple of God. You're the temple of God. And so when people want to find Jesus, as as Jesus, as men see Jesus to find him, where do they go? Where do they go? Let's use our example again. Not the one who's not as full of the faith. Somebody comes to uh, Eklo. Stel, er komt iemand naar Eklo. And they're hungry for God. Iemand die op zoek is naar God. They want to meet with God. Ze zijn honger en willen hem ontmoeten. Oh, I want to, I want to spend time with Jesus. Ik wil bij Jezus zijn. So they come into the city. Dus dan komen ze de stad Eklo binnen. And they say, where can I find God? En ze vragen, waar kan ik God vinden? What is your answer? U, als inwoner van Eklo, wat is uw antwoord dan? Oh, well, he's, it's, it's a, a church building down the street. Dan de staat uw kerk, uh, een beetje verder hier in de straat. And he won't be there until Sunday. En hij is daar maar op zondag op. <laughs> so, you know, help our economy to buy things from our stores. <laughs> Dus wees welkom in onze stad, koop in onze winkels, ondersteun onze economie. For several days. Blijf je maar verschillende dagen. And then on Sunday. En dan op zondag. You can come to the building. Dan kunt u naar dat gebouw komen, naar die kerk. We are the building. Nee, wij zijn de kerk. Amen. We are the house of God. Wij zijn het huis van God. So if you use our example, if we continue to use that example, somebody who's hungry for God, it is iemand die op zoek is naar God. They come up to you. Ze komen naar jou af, naar jou toe. You're the you're the temple of God. En jij bent de tempel van God. And they knock on your door. Zo van je deur. Because they they're at the temple. Ja, ze zijn in de tempel aangekomen, dus ze kloppen aan. They want to meet with God. Ze willen God ontmoeten. Ze willen naar God ontmoeten. Ze kloppen op je deur. And they say, is Jesus in there? Hallo, is Jesus thuis? And if you're having a bad day, en als jij op die dag een slechte dag hebt, you open the door. En dan ga je de deur open. Where do you want? Wat zeg je? Somebody told me. That Jesus lived here. Yeah, the man who was looking for him, naturally, he said, "I have heard that he is here." Well, he does. Well, yeah, yeah, he lives here. But he's in the back. Where is it for after? Where is it for? Here, on the plate for the day. Can I help you? Can I help you? I don't think so. I think it needs. This is this is 
actually a true experience. And did you feel that? We're supposed to be living as the habitation of God. Men och hoden hörs vara på sin sin omplats. We're supposed to be the vessel that carries Christ to the world. Men så vi ska inte inte säga när det är just en del av Kristus. But only on Sunday. Men det är bara en sån där hoden. No. Seven days a week. Seven days a week. Eller vad? Maybe we're maybe we say, well, this is his temple on Sunday. But on Monday I live here. 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 But on Monday I That's that's part of it. Not a deal on it. But that's not all of it. Seeking does. You see, Jesus could have come down and died on the cross. Jesus had to come and come and stand in that cross and saved us and was redeemed and said, "Oh, you know, looked at the crowd and said, 'Okay, you're saved.' And I'm going to say, 'You are now a Christ.' I did my work. I got my act done. And you know, I'm. I'm, I'm out of here. And then you know, so good luck. The best day, Vincent. <laughs> But he, he, yes, he did ascend into heaven. It is fine. It is obviously in our name. But he did something else too. No, he did not. What was it? What was that? He came into our heart. He is in our hearts to come. Amen. Amen. Again, that scripture in Colossians. Christ in you, the hope of glory. That's not the end of the sense of it. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Now, the the wording of these scriptures is incredible. The word here, the word what is actually in the Greek. Verse twenty-one again in Ephesians two. I'm going to say Ephesians three, and then verse ten. Verse ten. In hem was elke boom goed ingesluitend op tot een tempel, heilig in de Heer, in wie ook gij meegebouwd wordt tot een woonstede Gods in de Geest. First it says that we're being fitly framed together. Do you talk about the staff of the goed ingesluitend zijn? Together, Samuel. Not separate. Neither part. We're being formed into a temple. The word Samuel performs for the temple. And the next verse tells us for what purpose. And then start to ask the Lord that we may be a habitation of God. So that we can walk in the courts of His name. Not that we would just. Believe for salvation. You talk only about the believing in heaven, or believing on heaven. We're all saved. The same on heaven. Well, I don't know. Some of you, the way, the way I've been, you've been looking at me. I don't know. Okay, you're picking up. I'm not going to be here. I'm not going to be here. Cool. It's just a joke. That's not me. So we don't have to worry about that. Is that over who wants to use all the money and the same debt? When we talk about getting your eyes off of Jesus, like Joseph and Mary did, how does it sound? How does it feel when heaven does the ones fall from Jesus and the other one? They were still saved. Of Jesus and Mary alive. Oh, they were still. They were still with God. I walk in the right house. I walk sound in that house. They still believed everything that they believed before. Was it a man who loved them all day? All the sons of the Lord told them to deal with the same. They just got their eyes off of Jesus. Turn up in Jesus. I don't know for what. And that's when the problems start. And the world is broken. 
That's when the problems start with us. Because Jesus wants to be found. But where? My mind. In the temple. In the temple. In you. In you. Stop looking for it out here. So we elders. And ask the Holy Spirit to reveal Christ in you. Vraag het aan Hem in Christ dat Hij Jezus in u openbaart en in u. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna change the subject a little bit here. Now we're gonna stop your friend and even. I can find the notes. That's all we see. We're getting even. Um, let's look at verse. Let's go back to Luke chapter two. And this is not how we do it. And that's also free. And let's look at verse forty-four again. This vierde verse. Daar is een vermoeden. Dat hij de reisgezelschap was, gingen ze één dag reis verder en zochten onder de verwanten en bekenden. Nou, I'm going to point out a few things that I think are important. Zal ik een paar dingen op paar dingen willen wijzen? Ik denk dat ze belangrijk zijn. The first one we've already talked about yesterday. Over dat eerste hebben we het gisteren al gehad. And that is that they supposed that Jesus was there. That is that they thought that Jesus was us. Oh yeah, Jesus is with us. Jesus is with us. Oh, you know, it, life is good. Life is good. He's. I know that he's here. Is he here? Is he here? Would you rather say? And someone says, but where is he? Then is there someone who says, yeah, and where is he? Then we're talking about being in the temple. Where is he? Yeah, they say the temple is by Jesus. When people come knocking on the door of your temple, as Jesus on the door of your temple come knocking, do they mean Jesus? Is it on Jesus he's on the door, or do they mean you? Of on the door of you. They suppose that he was there. They didn't even find out that he was there. The second thing it says is that they suppose him to be in the in the company. The third is that that they veronderstellen that Jesus in the reisgezelschap is. They suppose him to be in the gathering. They veronderstellen that he in the vergadering, the gemeenschap is. Okay, but there is a problem because there are many people there. And the problem is that there are so few people, and he can get lost in the crowd. And then he can get lost in the crowd. But I now I want to contrast what we've just said with verse forty-six. Is that what that we even contrast here with as sixty-eight? So let's let's read that. And that is that it is written in the three days that they were gathered in the temple. Waar hij zat te midden in de leraren, terwijl hij naar hem hoorde en hem vragen stelde. This verse says something a little different than the verse we read before. In dit vers staat er iets wat eigenlijk wel een beetje anders is dan we zien nu. The first verse we read said that they supposed he was in the gathering. In die reeks staat er zo van om te stellen dat Jesus in het gezelschap was. The verse we just read. Says he is for sure in the temple. Verse 16 says Jesus is in the temple. Was he there in the gathering? Was he there in the gathering? No. Was he not? Was he there in the temple? Was he in the temple? Yes. No. Then was he there. What does it mean? What does it mean? It means that to God there is a difference between a gathering unto Jesus. Dat betekent dat er voor God een verschil is tussen een een verzameling van mensen die samenkomen rond Jesus and us being built as a habitation of God. En aan de andere kant opgebouwd worden tot een woonplaats van God. For example, people can 
Um, they can gather over someone's house. Je neemt bijvoorbeeld een aantal mensen die samen komen bij iemand thuis. En die rijst af. En samen rijst af. I don't want to make you hungry, but you're the only one who's hungry. But that's different people. But that's in men's sense. It's given to men's sense. Living different ways. The elk of an egg on you to live. With different ideas. The elk of an egg on you to live. And they only have one thing in common. And it's my one thing that they do. Rice ball. Rice ball. But on the other hand, but on the other hand, it's opposite of the forefront of God. When we're not just a gathering unto Jesus, as we're not select a group of people who are in Jesus' name together, but we are a temple, but as we stand in the temple for the name of God, then we live together for one purpose. Then we live together with one purpose. That one purpose. That Christ may live in us. That Jesus in us may live. I have an example of this. If Simone can put it up on the screen here. Get the notebook that we need to write. Yes, I drew this. Yeah, I can look at it. I am an artist. An artist. Well, that's as well. Well, I didn't do the Dutch. Ah, okay. Let me 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 Being scriptural, we're going to call these stones. Links have we stone on that bell stand in the street. Why? Why? Because Peter called us living stones. On that bell stand in the street, the stone moves. Okay. So here we have a gathering. This we have a sound comes. And here we have a building. And that's it, Thomas. Go on. Okay. What's the difference? What is it? The stone. This hit, this can either be a gathering or it can be a building. All these things in sound, that can be sound from sound of a gebouw. Whether it's this group here or the group in the middle of the end. Of the new egoists of Malderham. Malderham. But in the day of sun. Ja, en meestal daar een bouwwerk. Dus het is niet het stenige bouw waar jullie samen komen, maar het bouwwerk van God. Zo het is. Misschien vind ik daar niet. Oké. Alright. So, if you have a gathering, if you if you have a gathering of people, and let me just go ahead and finish. If you have a gathering of people, and the serpent comes along, what happens? Wat gebeurt er als je dus een samenkomst hebt van stenen en er komt een slang aan? Ik heb een gathering of stones en een serpent komt along. Een samenkomst van stenen. Hij kan hij kan get in between the crack. De slang kan heel gemakkelijk erin komen, roken tussen de stenen door. Hij kan get in between stones. Dus de stenen doen. Hij kan cause problems. Problemen veroorzaken. It can make one stone be against one another. Can one stone upset the other? But over here in the building, my bowwerk, we're built together. Say it, good in its place. We are a habitation of God. A home state of our hearts. Number one, he cannot get in. The least of the slang can eat in. He cannot get between us. Slang can eat. He cannot divide us. I must need to deal with because we have purpose. A purpose to stay together. We will stand together. Not just because we're Christians. Not only because we're Christians. Not just because it's the right thing to do. Not only because it's the right thing to do. 
But because we're a habitation of God. I don't know the sound of the rule, but I'm standing close. And the second reason why the serpent doesn't want to get in there. The tree that he wrote this long that need to sit in the Is because God's in there. That is not so. Self beings. We are a habitation of God. Ten holes here from faults. He doesn't want to get in there if he's going to meet Jesus. The slum will need to be a kind of Jesus in there. Amen? Amen. <laughs> he may not be afraid of you and me. But he's afraid of Jesus. Christ in you, the hope of glory. This is in you, the hope of glory. Okay, let's consider this picture on another in another way. Let's say that uh, somebody is walking by and he picks up one of the stones from this pond. For example, if you had a pile of stones about this big out in front. Stel dat er niet vooraan aan de langs de straat een weg stenen, draagbare stenen liggen. En het was this about this tall, een meter hoog, een half meter. If somebody was walking by, is there anyone who was sitting? And they said, "Oh, I like that stone." They said, "Oh, it's deep." And they took it, and they made me, and they went off with it, and sent it away. And you pulled up to the church, and you looked down. They they got the ball, and you looked at the pile of stones. You get them back, see it. You wouldn't even notice if one was gone. So you do have to let it be Right? No. Unless you count. Is it a little new belt? Your belts are not common. Is it a belt? Is it a new belt? I got you. I got you. These are my very close loved friends. And to see if he does not But not anymore. <laughs> okay, but consider the same thing we said we said. We considered it about the building. Thank you, John. If this building was not made out of block, but it was made out of stone, the building was made out of stones. Like instead of being a block, this was stone. Okay, instead of a block, it's a rock stain. It's not a block, and it's a block stain. And they walked by, and they walked in the house, and they saw this one right here. And see, now the stains in it. And they say, "Oh, I like that." And I hold on this thing. I like that stone. It's so pretty. Not the comedian. It glistens in the sun. Ah, they get it so boy the sun this thing. They can want that stone all they want. To put it in the stage of field, build it, ask them to build it. But they're not going to just pick it up and walk out. Build it and build it so much. Why? Why don't they? It's built together. It's in good days, Logan. You can't pull it out of the wall. Good days, you need to break it to do it. What did those scriptures say in Ephesians? The second scripture in Ephesians. It says that we are built together. Not of the sun, nor of the form. And so, if we're only a gathering, as a new meeting on the sun comes, and one of the stones leaves. And there is even a stain in that cut. We may not even notice. It's so good that it's actually not there. You know, a month later you look around. Another month later, okay, it's old. You say, hey, where is brother so and so? What are they doing in that cut? And someone else says, well, we hadn't been here in two months. I think my brother is all three months away. Really? That far. I didn't know this. I think you're going to see it. Because you're just a gathering. But if you're built together, and somebody pulls one of these out of the wall, and this thing on the stain lost out to you, you're gonna notice. There's gonna be a big hole. Hey! What happened here? Somebody took one of our stones. That stone belongs here. 
woord hier thuis. This is its place. Dat is het plaats van die steen. That serpent tried to take some of the stones away. En die slang blijft proberen om steen te pakken. And he knows. En dan zie je het. It's easy to notice if you're dealt together. Je zou het veel rapper zien als je een bouw hebt en dat samen hoort. So, what are we saying? Wat zullen we van deze dingen zeggen? Ah, what are we saying? <laughs> tell them, tell them what we're saying. Um, we're saying that, uh, well, we're, we're asking a question. What does God want for each and every church? That he wants to do. Stel het eens van wat wil God van zijn kerken? He wants us to be more than just a gathering. Hij wil dat we meer zijn dan een maand samenkomst. He, I know that we talk about having the power of God. Ik weet dat we het verhaal over de kracht van God ervaren. Against the serpent. Tegenover die slag. And I believe that. And ik geloof dat ik. It's in the Bible. Het is Bijbels. But there's another power. Maar er is nog een kracht. Instead of letting the serpent get in the gathering, in plaats van dat toe te laten dat de slang in de samenkomst binnenkomt, and spending all of your time rebuking the devil, dat je de hele tijd die dans moet doen om de duivel te bestraffen, just begin to be built together. Begin eens een soort van bouwwerk op te bouwen, niet samen. Het wordt een habitation van God. Het wordt een samen een woonsteden van God. Christ in every stone. Christus in iedere levende steen. His life in us. Zijn leven in ons. His attitudes in us. Zijn houding in ons. His love in us. Zijn liefde. How we treat one another. Hoe we met elkaar omgaan. His ability to forgive. Zijn vergevingsgezindheid in ons. I had uh, two people that were having a problem in our in our fellowship uh, some years ago. We also had a man that had a few friends who didn't know each other well. And that one Sunday, they they'd been having a problem for months. So now we want to wait another night. Now we pull it up. And that Sunday, I said something about you know we need to love one another. What was all that holy that they were with that other guy who didn't listen? And one of them came to me after the service. And took from England to be my son. And he said, "Brother, I have tried to love that person." He said, "Brother, I have done my best to try to love the other person." I have prayed. I have. Uh, I have done everything I know to do to love them. I have done everything I know to do to love them. I have done everything I know to do to love them. And they said. I just can't give them my love. Maar ik kan hem mij niet geven. And I said, well, why don't you try this? And he said, well, I'm going to be involved in this. Why don't you give him Jesus' love? Why don't you give him Jesus' love? Why don't you give him his love? Jesus' love. Instead of it being me trying to be what God wants. In the past, I'm big. Probeer te zijn wat God wil. Ik heb een habitation van God. Dat ik nu gewoon eens wat binnenlaat en naar de boven in neem. En wat je kan doen, en wat je niet kunt doen, je kan. Dat kan hij wel doen. Wat is impossible with man? Wat bij mensen onmogelijk is, is is possible. Mogelijk bij God. We always think about that that scripture being true of God far away. We denken dat dat vers slaat op God die ver weg is, dat die alles kan. But it's true of having Jesus in us. Maar als hij hier in ons is, is dat niet. When I can't love, als ik geen liefde kan geven, he is love. Dan is Jezus die de in me. When I can't give my love, als ik mijn liefde niet kan uitdelen, I say, Lord, you are my life. Dan zeg ik hier, u bent mijn leven. You live in me. U leeft in mij. You can love through me. You couldn't be heaven door me. Jesus said when they slap you on one cheek, turn the other cheek. He said, "Oh, one month stand, grab the other, give the other hand." Well, that's his spirit. That is the case of Jesus. It's not our spirit. 
we come to this. We try to do this. We try to do these scriptures. Maybe we'll be in the script now and even. You know, they slap us on one cheek. Now, aim up. And then they get ready to hit you on the other cheek. And sounds like flag on the other one to slap. And you hit it back. And you'll say it on the other Take that. Easy. Don't ever hit me again. And slam it with me. But that's why we have problems in the church. Because that gathering is not a habitation of God. It's just a bunch of individual Christians. God wants us to start being built together. One body. One spirit, in case, one church, in case, one Jesus, in Jesus. Amen? Amen. 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 Well, thank you for allowing me to share with you this morning. I really think that you will speak about it. And, um, and I ask you to just pray over these things. So I'm getting more of that on you over the day over these things. Because I know the, the people in the church that I'm a pastor at, they struggle with these things. They have a problem with me. Everywhere I go, people, they struggle with these things. And overall, I come to the men's and I'm with me. And I believe Jesus is still the answer. And he grows up, Jesus is not all the way down to this. So not Jesus far away. I need to use the event like this. Jesus in us. Jesus in us. Jesus toward one another. Jesus, the man's assembly. God bless you. I'll see you in the